bring in Gary Kaminsky. Gary Kaminsky is about to make a bold prediction, A, on why the markets are higher, but whether we'll ever see this kind of rate tightening move again. He's Morgan Stanley's advisor and co-host of Wall Street Week, along with a Fox Business and Fox News contributor. Gary, make your bold prediction. Well, before we do that, Liz, let's just slow down for a second. I'm listening to all these people chatting here. Let's first explain to people why the stock market is up today. The stock market is up today because it was a tremendous amount of protection bought into Friday's expiration on the anticipation or the concern that when the Fed actually moved at 2 o'clock today, if the market had gone down, and that is being reversed right now. So I'm not going to say that's 100 percent of what's going on, but I think it's very important that the viewers understand that this reaction right now has a lot to do with quantitative machines as, it, as much more so than it does with human beings actually saying, I'm going to go out and buy stocks now because the world is great. So let's just make sure that people understand that. The bold prediction, the bold prediction, yeah. if it's a bold prediction, is very simple. When we sit here today and we think about the Fed making this move, I don't think we're going to live in our lifetime again to see the Fed raising rates into a slowdown. Into a slowdown. Because things are slowing down. Now, I'm not saying that it's right or wrong. We had to come off of zero. Whether this was the time to do it or September or was it three years ago, but you listen to John Hilzerath, you heard what he said. What I would want to ask John was, this is all predicated on the Fed's forecasts. Well, you've heard me say, Liz, over the years, the phrase garbage in, garbage out. If you go back to 2012. Well, hold on, I got to interrupt you because we've got to get to the oil market. So we, we have been watching this and now suddenly we see that oil is again moving lower by about one and a half percent. Hold on, Gary, let's go to the CME. Jeff Flock is right there, Jeff. I tell you, we were watching uh, Janet Yellen's comments uh, with some oil traders who were just shocked. Uh, one said to me, did she just call a bottom in oil? Uh, pretty amazing. I mean, you know, if you missed it, she said that she was surprised by the further downward move in oil prices. And uh, while she didn't forecast a rebound, she did say she thinks prices will stabilize and that there is, quote, a limit to how far prices can fall. One trader after that said, yeah, pretty much zero. But there you go. The downward move in oil today, though, Liz, was not about Janet Yellen at all. It was about the inventory report from the uh, federal government. You know, uh, analysts were saying they thought inventories, U.S. crude inventories this week would be uh, reduced by a, uh, about a million barrels. Well, in, in contravention of that, actually, the reality was they grew by about five million. So uh, pretty dramatic news, and that is when the oil market sold off. After Janet Yellen started talking, I took note of where oil was when she started, and it closed uh, just a little bit up from that. So uh, her jawboning, uh, positive uh, a jawboning on oil helped a little bit, but not a whole lot, mainly and about did you hear, a worldwide and, glut. Yeah, and did you hear that she didn't blame oil, but she linked the fall in a junk bond fund that has had to close Third Avenue that is working to give redemptions out to simply being too focused on oil, which then ended up tanking, which brings me to Jeffrey Rosenberg. He's over at BlackRock. He's the chief of fixed income. They've got more than four trillion in assets, much of it in fixed income. Did you hear her say that, Jeffrey? She said when it came to junk bond fails and redemptions, they were concentrated in risky oil based funds. And, well, certainly people looked at that and said, i, I got to get out of junk, junk bond funds. Are you in that camp, or do you say now's the time to get in? Well, let, let's just clarify a couple of things. Uh, Janet Yellen made a, a very important point when it came to her comments on Third Avenue, that when you look at the characteristics of that fund and compare it to the overall high-yield market, that doesn't look anything like the high-yield market. It was called a, a concentrated fund. It was had a much higher risk than a typical high-yield fund. And exactly. That was what she was highlighting. She was answering the question, is this something we should be worried about? Is this systemic? And she absolutely answered it uh, very clearly by highlighting the unique characteristics. The reference to oil is that the concentration of the risks was in lending to oil and commodity related sectors and their concentrations in those sectors were much much higher than the typical high yield fund so those were the comments that she was making around uh... Yeah, Third I know. Is, she, is she are you hot on junk junk at this moment x energy really quickly 
So, you know, we've been cautious on high yield and higher credit risk in investments. It's not just high yield here. We look at what's going on in Brazil and emerging markets. You've had a commodity price bubble that has burst, and we're dealing with the consequences of that, which is a significant turn in the credit cycle. We've right. been advising for a long time to be more cautious. We've been cautious on energy. Uh, we continue to maintain that caution. Certainly, there's going to be some opportunities here tactically. We've seen that. But overall, this is a, a story that's still unwinding. Uh, and it's something that we need to be uh, cautious on. Yeah, you've been right on that call. And Gary Kaminsky, as we look forward, we do have, with just a few minutes left in the market trade, the Dow up 238 points. Do we wake up with a stock hangover tomorrow, yes or no? We wake up with what? A stock hangover. Look, I can't tell you what's going to happen in the next 24 hours, Liz. The important thing, as I was trying to say, is that if you believe that the Fed is raising rates because they've got a handle on a forecast right now, then I wish you good luck. The fact is, this was long overdue, but in terms of what the forecast is now and what the forecast may look like six months from now, if that's what you're going to be making your investment decisions on, good luck. Thank God I'm not a day trader because I would have gotten today totally wrong. <laughs> Brad, you know, I think that you look at what's happening right now and you see that this is a positive day, but the Fed will and has announced it will tread extremely carefully through that tiptoeing of the garden of the future, right? They left the punch ball here. I mean, they're, all they're doing is taking the, the level of the punch bowl down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Their foot's still on the accelerator. She still, made it very clear. Is there still alcohol in the punch bowl? Oh, my goodness, yes, yes. I mean, if you remember what she said, she said, you know, what is normal? Normal's over 1%, 25 basis points. We're still, our foot is still on the accelerator. Foot's still on the accelerator, but not fast. She's got, she's got, you know, people who drive with both feet, you've got one on the brake and one on the accelerator. Right, I think that's right. how it goes. She's just lightening up a little. Just right. a bit. Gary Kaminsky, Brad Hans, Jeffrey Rosenberg, the entire team countdown here with less than